Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Selesnia Humans. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to our final Streets of New Capenna standard video. I am so beyond excited to be jumping into Dominaria United as soon as we possibly can. Uh, it is set to release, I believe, tomorrow, uh, so we will do our best to kind of jump right into it and uh, hopefully have some fun. That does mean we will probably not have a video in the morning. I will try and get a video at some point down, but I don't know when I'll be able to. It'll just be kind of a matter of when the update goes through and all that stuff, uh, but we will do the best we can to get something up tomorrow. Uh, that being said, we are taking a look today at Rotation Proof Selesnia Humans, uh, which actually has like a lot of legs to it. Uh, I would argue that this mana curve, as you can probably tell, is not ideal. Uh, and so there's probably a lot of finagling that we can do here uh, and, and some playing around with some of the numbers of cards. But I thought I'd just try some stuff out here. This is much more of just a smorgasbord of options uh, than anything else. And so I would encourage you, if you decide to build a deck like this, definitely play around with the numbers because I don't think this is necessarily right. Uh, you can tell the three drop slot is a very large uh, portion of the deck, uh, but we do have some really nice top end and I'll kind of go top down here, I think. Uh, we do set, have sitting at the top two Sigarda, Champion of Light. Obviously a powerhouse card for the deck, but you don't want more than one on the field at any given time, given you can only have one. Uh, but this does help you kind of push forward and refill your hand. Uh, which is really important for the deck because it's very easy to run out. Uh, we do have Serith as well, which is going to hopefully be a more of a protection element to the deck. Uh, it also gives a lot of our lower ground creatures some long-term value in the attacking step because as they're tapped, they do have death touch. Uh, and so you do actually get some long-term value out of this as well. Uh, again, the, the huge three drop slot here, starting at the top, we got Brutal Cathar, it's creature removal, uh, so it, it impacts the board in a meaningful way, it also does remove something from the board on the opponent's end, just a really phenomenal, phenomenal, wow, play here. Uh, Extraction Specialist is in here because we do have an overabundance of two drops as well, uh, and so I thought I'd try this out. Um, I've had some good luck with it just in playtesting, I don't love it, but it's not bad, and it's a nice little immediate kind of two for one, uh, and so if you're a opponents playing point and shoot removal it does obviously have some benefits uh speaking of two for ones adeline uh is in here obviously capitalizing on the vast abundance of creatures and creating more of her own uh briar bridge tracker gives us a little bit of extra card draw which is really phenomenal auger of autumn works exceptionally well if we've got multi if, if we've got coven active essentially uh because it allows us to play cards from the top of our deck uh which is really really helpful uh, again, card draw is not something that green and white are necessarily known for, uh, and so having this option with the Briar Bridge Tracker with the Sigarda gives us a little bit of an opportunity to kind of keep moving forward. Uh, we have Torin's Fist of Fist of the Angels, excuse me, uh, to capitalize on just getting some extra creatures onto the battlefield. So this is certainly a good addition. Uh, been a little lackluster, I'll be honest. Um, I think being a three drop three drop two two uh, is a little bit tricky. Uh, just because, you know, you look at some of these other cards like Tracker, it comes in basically as a 4-3 uh, with Vigilance, uh, which is pretty huge. Uh, we do have Katilda in here for a little extra mana ramp so we can really dump our hand quickly and then throw some counters around. Uh, I did not go hard on Thalia because we do run Fateful Absence, but I do have two in here uh, because it does slow down certain decks and so I found it semi-useful. Um, but I think depending on the deck you're against or you're the, the kinds of cards you expect to see, I think this is definitely worth including more. Sun Gold Sentinel exiling some stuff from the graveyard and does really well if you've got that Coven ability, ability active uh, to, to kind of break board stall positions because you can still get the attack in some of the time. Intrepid Adversary works as a huge, huge uh, Lord effect for our board, especially if we do have Katilda down. Uh, we can tap some other things for mana and get a lot more activations out of it. Again, Fateful Absence for some removal, particularly with Planeswalkers, uh, and then Hopeful Initiate here as well for a little bit of artifact and enchantment removal and just an easy early uh, one drop. Um, but that's the deck. Uh, again, don't think this is necessarily a good build. I'm just suggesting uh, that we've got quite a lot of options here that I'm very keen to try out. Uh, this is, again, rotation proof, so you will be able to play this and hopefully build off of this with Dominaria United, so I encourage you to do so. Uh, with that being said, though, we're going to jump right in. Let's see how it goes. 
All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Uh, don't love this hand, but I will actually keep it just because we've got a nice one, two, into three. Again, we have a pretty large abundance of two and three drops, so I'm anticipating that we'll get something in the next couple turns that we'll also want to play. Uh, and if this is indeed a burn style deck, we'll be able to utilize uh, the extraction specialist most likely as well. So let's first attack in. I'll go ahead and just play the Sentinel. Um, it doesn't exile anything, but I think here we just need to be aggressive and force them into a position of they have to answer multiple things at once. Uh, and if they can't, good for us. So we'll see what they do. It looks like they're just going to throw the adversary out. I will actually take this block. Um, seems a little odd potentially, I know, but I do think it's probably for the best. Um, and we do have the extraction specialist here to kind of bring it back. So let's go ahead and get in for some damage. Let's play the extraction specialist. This is going to bring back the sentinel, which then allows us to take the adversary out of the graveyard. So here we just put six power on board on turn three, uh, which is pretty good. I mean, you know, not bad at all. <laughs> uh, we also do have lifelink with the extra extraction specialist. So that's actually quite important for us. Um, curious to see if they attack. They do. Uh, no, yeah. do I block? No, I don't think I do. I think we just take it. Um, and we'll see what happens. Awesome. Uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and attack him with both of these. We'll see what they want to do. Curious if they actually block or not. Looks like they will. It's perfectly fine. So we gain three life out of the deal. We deal two and we get a counter on our hopeful initiate, uh, which does seem pretty important. Um, I think we're going to end up leaving the Fateful Absence up here, just in case. This does seem like they, I mean, this could be a pretty large turn, and it looks like it will be. Uh, so, I think we definitely just go ahead and kill that before it can really do too much. And then, uh, yeah, I think we can actually pretty freely block. And then, um, while I suppose we won't get it back with the Extraction Specialist, they have basically nothing on board. Unfortunately, we don't have a great start here either, which... It's not ideal, but it's fine. Go ahead and attack in. I will just drop this down because we do want to keep progressing the board. And if they only have a single burn spell, we don't really just want to lose all of our momentum due to that, if that makes sense. So this, I think, is just the better option. Um, this is quite good for them. So they are going to get the attack in and we aren't going to block. We are just going to take the four. And if they have a burn spell, they have a burn spell, but Crucially, they are pretty down on cards. We are drawing quite a lot of lands here. Uh, definitely not ideal. We will go ahead and attack in here. At the moment, we're winning that race, so I'm not actually as concerned about that. Uh, we also gain some life back, so it seems pretty relevant. I'm assuming they draw. Yeah, seems fair. Uh, a Sigarda would be amazing right now. Really, just any big play would be awesome. Uh, and I think this is I, th I think this is a really good consideration that we probably need to raise the curve just slightly uh, to get a little bit more of those four drops in there. That may not be the case, but I do think it's perfectly reasonable to assume. Okay. Uh, sure. That's a lot of damage, and we can't really... Oh, well, that's helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and kill this. Uh, we basically are putting all of our hope in them not really being able to do too much about this, so we'll see. Um, I do like having the uh, the uh, Fateful Absence in the deck here, and you're seeing why, because obviously our creatures alone aren't necessarily the most powerful creatures. They certainly work well, pretty well, together. Um, However, it's pretty easy to get outpowered, uh, even by mono red, as we're seeing. And so it's one of those scenarios where it is pretty helpful to just have some extra things that we can do. Um, we could, I suppose, kill the treasure, but I don't think we want to. Interesting. Okay, well, I guess they have no... That makes sense. Sure. All right. Uh, yeah, perfectly reasonable. They are just, like, going crazy with as much as they can. Uh, makes complete sense. We really need to get something good here. Would love to get... Um, interesting, they're actually attacking. Wow. Okay. 
Very interesting. Um, would love to get, like I said, a Sigarda would be amazing. Uh, we could have killed this, honestly. Um, I'm actually not going to, though, because I'd rather have the counters, I think. Oh, that's beautiful. Absolutely perfect. All right, Brutal Cathar, phenomenal. Let's go ahead and get this off of the field. And now, I mean, there's literally nothing they can do, and we win. That's what we wanted. That was absolutely perfect. Fantastic. Let's see if we can keep that up, guys. Let's jump into game two. Check out this month's Patreon rewards celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. How do we feel about this hand? Not great. We do have a couple of two drops though, and I'm wondering if maybe that's enough that we could try and keep. All of the stuff in our hand, aside from the Sigarda, is easily playable, so any land that we get off the top of our deck does open these plays up. I think with that in mind, we'll try it. Uh, I'm not overly optimistic, but we will try. Um, I'm very curious to see how this goes. I do like having the Intrepid Adversary relatively early. It gives us a, uh, oh nice, a land. Uh, that's exactly what we needed. It does give us a way of gaining life in the early turns of the game, unless it of course just dies. Uh, but I think it's a relatively good spell to get, uh, get going pretty quickly here. Unfortunately, not a second white source in any of these lands, which is actually what we kind of want, um, <laughs> just for the, the Sigarda play. Uh, but we still have a couple turns here, and we've got some great turn threes. Uh, even if they kill the Intrepid Adversary, we can actually just bring it back, so I'm not overly concerned about that. Oh, fantastic. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna Brutal Cathar here. I'm doing this first because if they do have a Deadly Dispute, they're gonna want to play it now. Uh, if they have a removal spell, they'll probably want to play it now. Maybe not. Uh, no, probably not, actually. But uh, I think this is worth doing. And then if they burn the removal spell on the Brutal Cathar, just to like trade off here, we're kind of just getting a lot of cards out of the hand. I also did not have a land this past turn, which is very important. Yep, there it is. Perfect. This is honestly not the end of the world for us because we have the Extraction Specialist and we gain a lot of life out of the deal. I'm assuming this is going to be an environmental sciences because they need land, <laughs> uh, which is perfectly fine. Um, yep. So now they have their black source. That's cool. Not super concerned about that. Uh, is it just extraction specialist? Alternatively, we could sun gold into Katilda with Sigarda next turn. Um, Maybe that's a, the play. I'm not 100% sure. This uses the mana more efficiently, I suppose. We'll just take out of this. Um, and we'll get Katilda down. This just gives us... This is, I think, the highest ceiling play in terms of we get a lot of potential mana out of the deal here. If they don't remove the Katilda uh, or the, the Sentinel, then, you know, we'll be in relatively good shape. If they do, then that's probably just going to be their whole turn. Um, or at least the majority of their turn. So it is going to tax them pretty heavily to, to do this. Um, I assume they're going to want to play something to, to get rid of stuff here. Okay. Nice to know they've got a lot of point and shoot removal and not quite so much, I'm assuming, on the sweeper end. Uh, that's actually really helpful to know. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to do extraction, extraction specialist. Wow. Into Katilda. So now we've got a lot of mana, we've got a sink for it, um, and we've got a Sigarda in hand. They are just now getting their next land. Theoretically, they've also burned a lot of removal, so if they do have some more, I can't imagine it's a ton. But we'll see. I am really loving the synergy of this deck. I think that's part of why I enjoy it quite as much as I do. I just think it's really fun. Um, all right, I'm going to play Sigarda, uh, and we're going to get an attack in with the Specialist. Now the question is, do we want to play another Specialist? Um, part of me really wants to, and then the other part of me says maybe don't, just in case. I'm trying to think what Sweeper they might have. I think we can probably go for it. 
Um, I think it's just the adversary, right? All right. So we officially have a crap load of stuff on the field. <laughs> so basically it's sweeper or bust. Okay. That's not the end of the world. Um, that's perfectly fine. Oh, fantastic. Um, truthfully though, I'm wondering if we just need to do this. So I think I will. Um, this gave us a lot of life. It also deals with a lot. Um, and now, I mean, we're saving this in case they get to the point where they can remove a bunch of stuff. If they can't, then like, I mean, this is a very lethal threat next turn. <laughs> so like, they're really gonna have to push. A meat hook for two is good, uh, but it's not gonna be enough. Um, let's do this. All right, um, cool. So now we basically just have to hope they don't have another meat hook, I suppose. Uh, that would be really bad. We do have quite a bit of time in terms of life total to survive. And there we go. We got the win, guys. That's two for two. Let's go for a third game. We got some time. Let's see if we can do it. All right, guys, here we are. This is going to be our final game. So let's see what we can do. Uh, I also am really hoping I don't get interrupted. We have a new kitchen table coming today. Uh, and so I'm really hoping I can get that, get this recorded prior to that showing up. But they are on stop eight of nine. And we are the ninth. So uh, we'll see if this actually pans out. All right, looks like a life gain deck. Uh, that was a pretty good draw. Um, so a little curious to see what kinds of cards the opponent actually plays. Are they playing rotation proof or no? It looks like no, uh, which is very interesting. Um, and perfectly fine. Huh. Okay, very interesting indeed. Um, so, I mean, the easiest play is to remove the Luminarch Aspirant, which is probably the right play, uh, given this is going to be a very frustrating deck to be against. Uh, and that Luminarch Aspirant just means that they can scale up a lot more. Some of you might be wondering why we didn't play Luminarch Aspirant. It's not rotation proof, uh, which is the important thing here. So that's why we did not play it. I'm going to gain some life. That's fine. I don't particularly care about that, and if they want to draw that card, that's fine. Perfect. Oh, do you really love Adeline? All right, uh, great turn three. Honestly, I was not wanting to play the Brutal Cathar quite yet. I would have rather waited, uh, and so this is truthfully just like, I think the best possible outcome, uh, because now if they do play a very powerhouse creature, like a Righteous Valkyrie, uh, we actually can just remove it with the Brutal Cathar, um, and it's not really a problem. Uh, so all of this is kind of fine. I don't particularly care. Uh, and they're about to take quite a bit of damage. Uh, they do have to activate this as a sorcery, by the way. That's part of the reason why they are doing it this way, just as a heads up, uh, in case you were wondering. I am going to use the Brutal Cathar and not the uh, Fateful Absence here. All right. Let's get some damage in. Perfect. Um... So now we've got instant speed removal up uh, next turn if we need it. So if they can deal with our Brutal Cathar, we've got a backup option, but we can also still play an Intrepid Adversary as we see fit. Um, and they don't have an attack in here. They are leaving one of these guys up, which is interesting. I think we just go for the Adversary play. This is kind of like the win more play, so not the safe play, but it's definitely the cool one. Uh, is to just bump up the board and attack in. Um, I don't, wouldn't recommend this. Normally I would just leave up a Fateful Absence, <laughs> sure. That's perfectly reasonable uh, and I'm not all that bothered by it. It's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Wow, multiple, okay. Uh, sure. <laughs> we still get that, we still get the token. Uh, so they are still gonna have to block here, sure. They're now down to two. So, with double Fateful Absence and Intrepid Adversary available, uh, I feel like we're in reasonable shape. I really hope they just tap the two Ministers and we double Fateful Absence and then give them next to nothing available. <laughs> Seems pretty good. Land isn't bad. Uh, I'm just going for this. We're just going for the, the easy kill everything kind of play. 
We'll attack in for a lot. Uh, and let's see. We did it. There we go, guys. That's an undefeated run with Selesnia Humans. Let's talk about this deck. All right, guys. So our last deck in Streets of New Capenna, and it was a phenomenal one. I can't believe we went undefeated with it. I am so beyond excited. I did just get the text that they are about to pull up, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this one short, but I highly recommend trying this deck out, seeing what you can do with it, maybe playing around a little with the, the numbers, but very, very good. I'm excited to see what Dominaria United brings tomorrow, so please do tune in. We will hopefully have some gameplay up for you, but until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys tomorrow.